Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Welcome to Trading View YouTube and my subscribers on Patreon. How you guys doing? Welcome. Let's do another video of my little diary here. Let's go back in time. We'll talk about Dogecoin. I don't recommend anybody trade this, but I do want to take you back in time for the charting purposes of it all. And uh, back on May 9th, I said, look, this is a topping M pattern. All right, classic. Uh, sure enough, uh, it dropped. And then I said, I'm short-term bullish and long-term bearish. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened, right? Um, and, you know, that's the power of learning how to, you know, read a chart. Um, you want to learn how to read a, a plain chart. Once you can do that, you can add all the fancy stuff on top of that. But I think it's vitally important that people learn how to read a basic raw data. Uh, bare knuckle charting is what I call it. Uh, chart, okay? So uh, since uh, I posted this, you got the little bump. That's great. And we failed right at resistance. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. Now, if you look at the structure, you got a one, two, three down, and then it popped. You also came and tested the previous lows just about, very close. Uh, so the key area now for you, if you, I don't recommend it, but if you do want to trade it, uh, what you want to do is there's two key areas. The first key area is either at the bottom on a hook or a breakout. All right. These are the two key areas right here. Now, key areas are key because they can go either way. <laughs> so uh you know wait for the hook okay don't let it don't let it fall apart on you uh, make sure that once it breaks right you get some kind of structure and then off you go uh, typically that's what happens all right so just bear that in mind um all right crb index the inflation is not over you you see a lot of guys on social media and gals are going to tell you that transitory, not transitory, blah, blah, blah. Look at the lumber chart, la, 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 la. They cherry pick data within the CRB index to try to pass off whatever ideology, political stance or whatever uh, economics they follow and, you know, whatever. Don't fall victim. Look at the CRB index, okay? As long as the CRB index remains high, Inflation is here. That's one. Two, prices have already risen. Coca-Cola, Berkshire, Kimberly Clark, Smuckers, they're not going to lower prices if the CRB index falls. That means inflation has already taken place. Okay, so there's they've been saying transitory, transitory for months. <laughs> At some point it's not transitory. You can't use that word. No. Done. Inflation is here, all right? So keep that in mind. And, and uh, you know, you look at here, Will Mosler, he's sitting here saying, yeah, well, you know, if the Fed raises rates, it would be inflationary. Well, <laughs> since then, it's gone up another 30% or something, right? Uh, I don't know if, I, if he knows it or not, but inflation has come with zero interest rate policies. Magic. <laughs> so why is he talking about higher rates being inflationary when low rates are inflationary? That doesn't make sense to me. When you look at Volcker, how did he kill inflation? He raised interest rates. And what happened to interest rates then? They fell apart. Right? Why? Because inflation fell apart. Right? So he doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you follow him. Just be really, really careful on the stuff he says. Really, really careful, all right, because he gets a lot of things wrong. All right, uh, Tron, I, again, these are penny stocks. I don't recommend them, uh, but I do use them for charting purposes. A little bit early on this call, okay, but I did get the second one, which is a topping M pattern, fell apart, came back up, back down. All right, I think it's down 70% or something, something like that. Uh, this was my first call, all right. And came down slightly, then boom, blew up in my face, came back down, came back up, and then formed a second top. A little bit early, but 
it fall apart ultimately. All right. So that's Tron. Again, I would not recommend anybody do that. All right. Perspective. Let's keep things in perspective. This is not the way markets move. And when they do move like this and they go vertical, they come <laughs> right back down. Right? That's called the Eiffel Tower pattern. Now, why is this happening? All right. We'll do a little bit of economics if you guys don't mind. I know everybody thinks that, oh, economics has nothing to do with the stock market. Well, <laughs> that's not possible because you need companies to have more revenue, more profits, okay, um, for the S&P to continue to rise. Now, today, I think 30% of the S&P 500 doesn't even have earnings. <laughs> Some ridiculous amount. We're back to 2000 again. And not only are we back to 2000 again, but we are way more uh, expensive now in terms of the stock market than we were back in 2000. We have way more deficits than we do back in 2000. We have QE. We have zero interest rate policies we didn't have in 2000. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> remember that we don't have a liquidity problem. That was a 2008 problem. We have a solvency problem. And they're trying to fix it with liquidity. So they're applying the wrong medicine to the, to, to, to the wrong diagnosis. They don't understand what's going on. So what happens is there was so much money that has flooded the system that you get an everything bubble, meaning that stocks are going straight up, bonds are going straight up, real estate is going straight up, and now you have commodities going straight up. See, commodities is the equalizer. Money is flowing, has filled up in so many other asset classes that now is starting to spill over into commodities. Commodities is a small market. So when they start to go, you, you see inflation in the real economy. You see the problem? That's why it's the equalizer. And um, if interest rates um, remain low, uh, then you're going to end up with more and more commodity prices. You get more deficits, you're going to end up with more commodity price inflation. Right. That's the way it works. All deficits end up as savings for the top 5%. Savers do what? They don't invest it back into the productive economy because they get uh, more money speculating in asset classes. When you speculate in asset classes and the government is going to back you up with more deficits, more QE, and backstop your risk, you got to be stupid to take your money and go put it in and, and risk it in the real economy. Right? You get free money from government. And whatever you buy, they're not, they're not going to let the stock market go down. That's the problem. So let me show you something here. Right? Bonds work a little funky for some of you. When bond prices are down, okay, uh, interest, interest rates, yields rise. Okay. The reverse happens when the bond prices go up. Okay, bond price go up, yield goes down. All right. Now, what's the difference between these two? What's what was happening here? Well, think about it. That let's say I, I give you a five percent interest rate for the next ten years. You buy the bond, you hold it for ten years, you get five percent every year. When you have zero interest rates, that means the bond prices are high. So what does that do? Well, bond prices start to behave like stocks, that you get paid by the bond price rising. Okay, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, okay? Uh, and you, you're not getting any interest, but you're getting that bond appreciation, all right? And that's what's happening. Investors are buying bonds only because they're being rewarded by the Fed because the, the Fed is buying those bonds. Now imagine if we were to dump $8 trillion of bonds into the market, what would happen in interest rates, right? The bond prices would fall and the interest rate would rise. If interest rates rise while the earnings yield, which right now in stocks 
is 2.2%, right? And right now the bonds are, are uh, paying 1.5%, okay? And you have them now rise out of, uh, I don't know, say 5%. Why the hell would you go buy a, a stock? Money chases yield, right? So you would buy a bond. You would sell all your stock and run into the bond market. All right, because the yield, the earnings yield of stocks is not enough. So this is the manipulation that the Fed is doing. Okay, it's suppressing bond prices by doing this artificial QE, increasing the money supply and then shrinking the amount of stocks that are available relative to what they would be with the deficits. And you end up with this really funky uh, kind of uh, market which is very distorted. So now think about this, that stocks are paying 2.2%, okay? You got bonds paying 1.5%, and inflation is 5%, okay? Inflation is 5%. Both stocks and bonds are negative earnings rate yield. Negative earnings yield. They're both losing money to inflation. That's problematic. You can't sustain that. Um, but again, you know, you have this really weird kind of dynamic going on where there's so much money all over the place um, that you end up with this really weird cockeyed kind of market. Now, the problem with that is, and think of it, you know, rate of change requires volume, okay? You need more and more dollars to keep the rate of stocks rising, okay? So for the rate of change to continue in this trajectory, you're going to need a lot, a lot of dollars. Think of going the speed of light, right? Why can't we go the speed of light? faster we go, the bigger the mass. So you kind of end up in a situation where you go vertical for a little bit and then you come right back down, which is called the Eiffel Tower pattern, All right? Uh, you know, how many more trillions can we pump? Think about it, All right? Um, I don't know how many more they're gonna print. I have no idea, uh, but I can tell you that you need an awful lot more of endless of trillions of dollars to keep the volume going up even more and more and more and more, right? So that's that's problematic. That's problematic. So keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, you know, it, it used to be that, well, when everybody piles into the market, then you should sell. Well, that's not really true anymore, is it? Because it's not, we, we don't need those people's money. As long as the people that are already in the market have more money, right, which is the top 5%, then markets go up. It doesn't matter if the waitress is telling you, the doctor is telling you, your lawyer is telling you, buy stocks, do whatever. It's got nothing to do with that anymore because of QE, because of excessive deficits, right? It's just if they keep pumping more trillions, endless of trillions of dollars and free stuff for everybody, uh, you're going to keep having this kind of dynamic. Now, the problem is, again, it's inflation, right? Um, how high is it going to average out to? Three, three and a half percent? You know, four percent? I don't know. Nobody can know that. You know, is it going to increase to seven percent? I, I don't know that. Nobody knows that. But just kind of keep that in mind that eventually the great equalizer commodities is going to uh, make things very interesting. Okay. Uh, what else? Let's talk about uh, crypto. Nice little setup. This is textbook. This is, this is the kind of stuff that you want. Right? Thrust up down, wave two. Wave three comes in by the breakout, and voila. There it is. Okay? Comes to the previous high, has some difficulty, forms an M pattern, and then falls. Textbook. All right? So that was a nice little call there. Uh, Diana Shipping, on fire. On fire. Now, this is tied to commodities, okay? Shipping is very small. Remember that. It's a very uh, bottleneck industry, 
Now, when commodities are falling for 14 years now, um, being suppressed, being suppressed, being suppressed, and finally they start to break out, uh, shipping is going to break out as well. Uh, shipping costs start to rise. Uh, some people are going to blame uh, supply chains. Sure, there's some supply chain problems, but uh, it's it's kind of like the, oh, look at lumber. <laughs> lumber is down. Inflation is over. <laughs> Meanwhile, the CRB index is sky high. So be careful with that stuff. All right. So um, Diana shipping took off up 50% since I first posted it back on April 28th. All right. And you can see them down here. Uh, again, this is uh, the red line is tips versus TLT, right? Tips are Treasury Inflation Protection. And as you can see, uh, as commodity prices rose, tips versus bonds, tips were outperforming. Now, lately, that has not been the case. But I am willing to bet so long as the CRB remains high, you're going to probably see this catch up. All right. That's probably what's going to happen. Or you're going to see the CRB index start to roll over. That could also happen. Um, but till then, this is going to be very bullish for um, for stocks. I mean, for uh, Diana Shipping. OK, this is when I was saying uh, February 24th, you know, that the likelihood here. Remember, so long as it's within restructure, you, you wait for a pullback, right? It breaks out then you look for the breakout so voila broke out all right and so did diana shipping right at the same time so this is a commodities play remember that all right good so that that's a nice little move there uh diana uh tacos energy this is the last value stock that i can find in the whole entire market i swear i can i tried hard now, uh, I didn't draw this as, as, as well as I should have. All right. So it should look like this. So you got a cup, you got a handle, and this thing is about to go. Now, I've said that before, but this one looks like it's going to go. So keep an eye on this one by the breakout right there. All right. And see if this goes. All right. It's kind of simple. Simple trades. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't taken off with oil 74 ish. 75 uh i'm surprised it hasn't taken off yet sometimes they lag that's okay that's why they're value all right uh other than that taking a look at the um nasdaq okay we have this tight formation here all right tight 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 tight, tight. usually what happens with these is they drop uh it can go vertical before it drops Okay, you can do a vertical move and then start to correct. So just be aware of that. Let's see how it does holding this, you know, this uh, dual resistance area in here. Okay. Because it's back into structure now. So let's see how well it does. We'll see. Um, other than that, uh, commodities we talked about, you know, you look at uh, cryptos. All right, here, here's... Here's my thought on this, that if you get a nice sharp move down, another sharp move down, this will be a great buying opportunity because this is going to end up looking very bullish. OK, that means that cryptos are not going to take three years for it to, to start to go back up. If, on the other hand, it starts to drag it out, something like this and just kind of fades away, we're going to be in a down downtrend for a while. OK. So in my view, I, I much prefer that it just kind of washes everybody out. You get a one, two, three down, you get the structure, you buy the breakout and make a lot of money faster. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, if you look at Tesla, okay, might have a nice little breakout here. Okay. It's kind of obvious. All right, see if this breaks out. All right. That's it. Uh, if you have any questions, PM me. Thank you very much for your support. Have a great weekend. Have a great trading week. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye.